from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at VMworld 2018 Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Hey Dave. Hey Lisa, how's it going? Great, this morning started off with a tremendous amount of momentum from Pat Gelsinger, including a new tattoo that he debuted. 20th anniversary of VMware, 20th anniversary of the Rackspace Dell EMC partnership. Please welcome to theCUBE, a veteran and alumni, Peter Fitzgibbon, the VP and GM of the VMware practice at Rackspace. Peter, it's great to have you back. Great to be back here again at VMworlds. And we're excited to welcome David Trigg to theCUBE, the Global Vice President of Market Development and Service Providers from Dell EMC. Welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. So, we, happy 20th anniversary to Rackspace and Dell EMC. Thank you. Long standing partnership. What's going on? A lot of momentum at Dell Tech World just, what, four months ago. What's some of the momentum that you guys have seen in your joint customer space this summer? Yeah, so at Dell Technologies World, we launched our Rackspace Private Cloud powered by VMware, or Everywhere Edition as we're referring to it, which is extending Rackspace Private Clouds into customer data centers and colos. And since that announcement back at Dell Technologies World, um, we've seen fantastic adoption from both our existing install base that, that is, uh, tr that's, that's interested and, and, and knows the Rackspace brand and a fanatical experience, as well as net new customers that know now we can service them in new locations. And then, David, for you, Dell Technologies World was all about IT transformation, digital transformation, security transformation, and making it real. How are you, how is Dell EMC working with Rackspace to help customers make these transformations a successful reality? Yeah, well, one of the first things, in my opinion, to highlight is the length and time that we have worked together. And through that length and time, Rackspace has made incredible investments in their skill set, their ability to manage infrastructure. To, you know, there's a lot of deep knowledge there, so customers can very, feel very confident about the ability to provide the services. And as customers go through transformation, customers have more choices now and more things as we talk about the edge and the core and the cloud. They have to manage infrastructure in more places than they've ever had to manage before. So we're very proud of the relationship that we've had, the investments that they've made, because our customers are needing help in managing through not only the transformations, but all of the choices that they have to make on where's the best place to put an application, where's the best place to put a workload, and how do they manage the migrations and the modernization. And so yeah, it plays very, very close into our transformation message, and quite frankly, we couldn't do it without uh, partners like Rackspace. Let's talk a little bit more about that, because you're talking about more than just a storage partnership, right? Oh, There's yeah. A, a lot more to it, it's much more comprehensive. Absolutely. Sort of sets of integration. Uh, practices and, and, and areas of expertise. So let's double click on that a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of skill sets that are required to even just do assessments around really understanding where do the applications go. Uh, really then making sure that they understand how do you support the infrastructure, how do you monitor the infrastructure, and how do you make sure that it's running uh, a lot. And again, Rackspace has made a lot of investments as um, one, one of the best in the world in being able to help do a lot of this. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that. Why Rackspace? Well, we are offering customers strategic flexibility, really, whether they want to deploy in a Rackspace data center, a customer data center, um, get access to our deep expertise, not just in Dell EMC, but our 150 plus VMware certified experts that, that our customers can now tap into, because as this world gets more and more complex, and, and you saw even the announcements this morning, um, it's like, how, how do our customers get the best value from those technologies and not simply have shelfware? Tap into to Rackspace with our partnerships with, with Dell EMC and VMware to get the real value out of that expensive technology. So from a customer standpoint, help us understand what's really going on. You know, we've asked, we asked the question a lot this week is, is things like the AWS VMware partnership, is it a one-way trip to the cloud or is it a boom for the, for the data center? Mm. And, and, and a lot of people are saying the latter. What are, what are customers saying? What do they really want to do? Listen, customers are going to be living in their data centers for a long time yet to come. We've got legacy applications living on mainframes, we've got client server applications, and we have direct cloud native applications, but there's a slew of applications in the middle where customers are kind of unsure about where to go, and they, they, they lean on a trusted partner like Rackspace, who, who really is cloud agnostic, to help them figure out, should they go public cloud, should they be private cloud, or are they in a hybrid cloud journey like everybody is on? So um, we, we want to be the Switzerland where we can help people determine where they should go and, not, and really offer unbiased expertise. So you guys announced, um, in, in kind of along the lines of being Switzerland, 
at Dell Technologies World, Rackspace private cloud everywhere, mm -hmm. powered by VMware, everywhere. I know you've got, what, five data centers in five continents. Talk about that everywhere. How does it help customers to um, embrace the reality of multi-cloud yep. and to actually do so in a way that allows them to understand, working with you guys, where different applications should be placed at, at different times in the year. Yeah, so everywhere is a, a natural evolution of what we've offered in our, in our own um, data centers over time. So now deploying that in customer data centers and colos, but well, later this year we hope to launch a formal VMware on AWS offer as well. So everywhere uh, constitutes three parts really. Rackspace data centers, customer data centers to get as close to their data as needs be, and VMware on AWS as that product matures as you saw from a number of announcements this morning. And to add on to John's question about the promise of the cloud, I think the original promise and maybe the threat of the cloud was everything was going to the cloud. Well, as we're learning through IoT and other new emerging trends, that's not realistic. Customers really have to think about the edge, their own data center, because their own data centers are not going away. They have to think about the SLAs that they're providing to their end users, to their employees, and that's where you have to place the application, the workload in the right place to enable the best customer experience for their customers and their employees, and that's where a company like Rackspace that can really get to the edge, the core, the cloud, by managing that infrastructure regardless. Uh, obviously, the investments that VMware is making to help enable that as well, and being supported by a lot of the Dell EMC stuff, it's, it's an exciting time, I think. I, I want to follow up on that, because uh, Peter, off camera you said cloud migration doesn't mean leaving your data center. Absolutely. This Gartner analyst came out, you know, not that recently, but I think it was last year, and said 80% of data centers will shut down by 2025. So that caused a lot of, mm -hmm. right, both eye rolling and no way and et cetera. The Wikibon crew, which is affiliated with theCUBE, sister company, sister division, just came out with a report said true private cloud is going to be a $32 billion market this year. So that means on-prem mm -hmm. cloud. Yep. So there's, you have all these countervailing messages going on. Then you see, of course, the epitome of Andy Jassy up on stage today with, with Pat Gelsinger talking about hybrid cloud. What do you guys make of all this? What's really happening and going to happen? I, I think customer data centers are going to live for some time to come as people figure out where, where should the workload actually go? What can they do with that specific workload? Can they refactor it and rebuild it for it and go cloud native? Great. Can they move it to a hosted private cloud model with Rackspace rolling racks into a customer data center? Um, or is it a legacy application that really needs to be, to be kept and maintained over time until the next disruption happens where they really have to refactor it? So yeah, really, I, I, in that case, there may be no business case. Why, why lift it and shift it for what? You know, exactly. just, just to say, hey, I'm in the cloud? I, I, exactly, yeah. I think with cloud migrations does not mean leaving your data center. I think that's going to continue for, for some time where people can get the, uh, benefits from Rackspace, moving from a CapEx to an OpEx model with managed services, with industry leading SLAs, um, but still in their own data center because they have applications running there that cannot be moved. Well it's interesting, David, to see this equilibrium that's kind of being reached, you know. A few short years ago there was sort of antagonism between mm -hmm. VMware and the AWS, you know, the whole bookseller comment. Andy Jassy was like, on-prem cloud, there's no such thing. And now you see those worlds coming together underscoring the reality that you can't just shove your business into the public cloud, you can't just move all your data there, and there may not be a business case or an advantage of doing that. Right, What do right. you see? Well, a lot of times answer the question um, in the, one, I'm not an analyst, so it's not my job to really predict where it's going to go. I mean, obviously we watch trends and look where it's going. You know, my job and our job is to help customers deal with the realities that they're dealing with right now, right? And they have data centers, they are thinking about the cloud, they are having to take care of the edge, right? And in time, we've seen some of those shifts, right? There was a lot of the, where are we going with the cloud? Where's it going to go? Are they going to shut down all their data centers? Regardless of that, we will adjust to the market and make sure that we're adjusting the market. But more importantly, we're going to do what's right for our customers to help enable them through those journeys, and, and it's still yet to be proven. There's a lot of predictions out there Will they shut down all data centers. I, I'm sure there'll be some consolidation of it, but uh, yeah, it's, it's getting more complex. Okay, so, so VMware, Rackspace, Dell EMC, you're not screwed. <laughs> Check. What about, what about the edge? Help us unpack that a little bit. You know, wither VMware at the edge, Rackspace, Dell EMC, what do you guys see evolving there? I, I think there's many definitions of the edge, yeah. and, and, and when you talk about everything's IoT initially, but even just deploying smaller uh, da data centers in, in customer locations to, um, in partnership with these guys to kind of meet customers where they are and get smaller, smaller roll-in racks into different locations is continuing to be something that customers are looking for. 
So there's the hinterland edge, yeah. which is a bunch of devices, you know, IP cameras, they're going to be instrument. Most of the data is going to stay there anyway, but then I think you guys call it, I don't know, the core, or, uh, 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 there's a aggregation point. Well, the core, which is will. typically what we refer to as kind of the customer data center, and then there's the cloud, right? So kind of the two different customer data center versus the cloud, and then truly the edge capturing. And, and it, it's starting to refer to everything from you know, laptops, phones, uh, as well as really a lot of the sensors that are going to be out there, and your ability to have to process and analyze it in React real time at the edge. And so a lot of use cases, public safety use cases, where you know, when an event happens, that connection back to a place where you would analyze it, obviously autonomous cars, right? They can't have to connect to a data center every time it wants to make a left turn. So a lot of that ability has to be pushed out to the edge, but yet then also be able to bring that data back, be able to manage that, and be able to update those computers or those data centers. I mean, an autonomous car is basically a mini data center. Someone's got to manage that, patch that, make sure it's running um, and manage that. So yeah, to your point, the edge is beginning to mean a lot of different things. Um, there are the hinterlands, I think was the word you use, you know, and some of those things, but then, you know, there are the more traditional work cases and even just, you know, running a phone app is now considered an app versus, you know, um, and that's that's where people start to really look, look at is how do you deliver that experience on a desk phone, and that's an application. A lot of data, I like to follow the data, you know, there's yeah. a lot of data at the edge, there's a lot of data, so like I say, the aggregation point, and then yeah, if you want to do some hardcore model, modeling, go to the cloud, and that cloud can be your own on-prem data center. Right. Yeah, there's right. just so much so. data being generated, and data is power, I think is one of the, 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 the key taglines of Dell EMC world, and I was like, it truly is. It's like where the data is is where the power is, so some has to be transferred back to the core, some may be pushed up to the cloud for deep processing with, with, with AI and ML uh, type processing, but um, there'll be data at all these different points. Well, that's the other point, is it's like the innovation engine no longer is Moore's law in this industry, it's the data, applying machine intelligence and then cloud scale. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you got to, as suppliers in this business, you better be playing in some way, shape, or form in all three of those, right? Absolutely. So yep. how is, speaking of that, I think Pat Gelsinger talked about it this morning in the context of superpowers. You talked about yep. autonomous vehicles, AI machine learning, advanced analytics, IOT. How is, Dell EMC and their technology, Peter, helping to enable Rackspace to optimize your offerings, to be able to take advantage of machine learning, AI, to be able to deliver an, on customer yeah, expectations. Yeah, we're, we're deeply partnered with these guys that from, from, from the, those announcements that you heard earlier this year that we're already investigating the different capabilities they're having from an AI, ML perspective, really seeing what sort of technologies are they launching that we can then uh, put into our private cloud practice and, and offer to our customers. So it's our deep partnership allows us to kind of get a front seat at that and working closely to investigate and do a lot of R&D with the new capabilities they're coming out with, so. What superpower does that give Rackspace? In terms oh. of differentiation? Uh, you stumped me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, customers that we talked about, everybody wants flexibility, they also have choice. Yeah. What are some of the things that this 20 year partnership infuses into Rackspace to give you that, those differentiation yeah, it, points? It, it, it's, it's the deep partnership and, and knowing, working so long together that we know who to pick up the phone to to, to, to solve some of these complex problems. Yeah, and for us, it, we, you know, from my perspective, we always start with our joint customers in mind first, right? So it's our job to be, bring the advanced technologies, the advanced capabilities that we're making big investments in, and make sure that Rackspace is able to support and leverage those within their business so that we can provide a better experience for the end customer, but then also making sure that we show Rackspace you know, how they make money on that and how they can run a business on that that really is differentiated to your point, um, because a lot of you know, you, you painted a very pretty vision of what the world might look like. Most customers aren't there yet. Most customers aren't taking advantage of AI and deep learning. They're still dealing with some very traditional legacy issues, and it's that gap that becomes very, you know, we love talking about the cool, new, exciting stuff, but for a lot of customers, they're stuck somewhere in the middle. And, and that's where partnerships like this, because you can not only help them with the legacy old stuff, you know, how do you migrate, and then how do you take advantage of the really new stuff, or how do you start at least thinking about that and exploring that, and looking, you know, a lot of the original IoT use cases, you know, the ROI wasn't known, they're like, set up projects, and they hoped they'd get a, a benefit out of it, right? Um, and that's continuing to emerge and evolve as, as time goes on. Well, it's hard, too. I mean, everybody's afraid of getting Uberized and disrupted, et cetera, et cetera, but they, at the same time, if you over-rotate, yeah. you know, to a new, you spend a bunch of money yeah. and not get any return. Yeah. Everybody's trying to get digital right. 
it seems, but it's unclear what that means, so they look to partners like you to help them figure well, that out. Well, it's a scary journey to your point, because they obviously have existing revenue streams, they, you know, it's the innovator's dilemma, right? You know, it's, they have existing revenue streams, but how do they digitize their business? How do they reach customers in a different way? And so they don't become uh, Uberize or Airbnb or, or whatever what term you want to use, and, um, but they, they, every CIO, every executive is thinking about that. You know, IT for a long time was about taking cost out of the business, mm -hmm. which after a while, that's not fun, because that usually means headcount reductions. That usually, I mean, that's not a fun conversation to have every single day. Now with the digital transformation, it's about how do you generate new revenue streams? How do you, in a way, a lot of companies never, you know, one of the most older industries being taxis, you know, not, not that exciting. It's, it's gotten reinvigorated through some of these things. So it's, and, and, it's kind of cool. Yeah, and, and you said it's digital transformation, right? What does that really mean? Cloud transformation, security transformation, oh, app yeah. transformation. So there's many different factors and, and companies like Rackspace can offer expertise in all those different areas where some of our competitors may only hit on one of those. They're only a security company or only a VMware shop right. or only an AWS Helping shop. Helping customers really glean the power from that data because if they can't, it's not powerful. Gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping by theCUBE and talking with Dave and me. We appreciate hearing what's going on with Rackspace and Dell EMC. Thanks, thank you guys. Thanks so much, Thanks appreciate, very much. Thank appreciate you. the time. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE for Dave Vellante. I'm Lisa Martin, we're at VMworld Day 1. Stick around, we'll be back after a break.